If you hadn't noticed, I'm a knight. Hello, I'm Knight Jake, host of the Amati Fortress Radio Podcast, and welcome to Movie Gripes. Hello and welcome to Movie Gripes. Yes, that's right. I've found another Luther movie that we can gripe about. This Luther movie from 1974 was based on John Osborne's play based on the life of Martin Luther. This series of scenes is depicting Luther's pious monkery. Um, but actual fact, he I used to sleep outside in the heaven. snow, not just inside in the cold. I understand they're trying to give a visual image of Luther's unfectum, but unfectum was just a spiritual attack, and Luther never had any of these physical panic attacks and fainting like this. Not me! I am not! I'll tell you what, like that day, that day coming home from Erfurt, when the thunderstorm broke, you were so scared you lay on the ground and cried out to St. Anne because you'd seen a bit of lightning and thought you'd seen a vision. I saw it all right. You went and asked her to save you on condition you became a monk. I saw it. Luther didn't become a monk because he saw some kind of vision. He was terrified that he was going to die in the storm and he prayed to St. Anne that if she spared him, he'd become a monk, a, a kind of a barter prayer. I hope it was a vision, and not some delusion or trick of the devil. I really hope so, because I couldn't bear to think of it otherwise. Look at them. Take a good look. They're in the sin so big that one of these letters can't remit it. I don't care what it is. I can settle it for you here and now. Why, if anyone ever offered violence to the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God herself, he did only pay up. As long as he paid up all he could, he'd find himself forgiven. Okay, so this gets two gripes. Firstly, because the actual sin that Tetzel said that could be forgiven by indulgences was violating Just the Virgin Mary. In other words, raping the Mother Mary, not committing violence against her. And this gets you a second gripe there. because this was actually said oh, later in life, not, not this early on when today. he came to Wittenberg. Oh, no. For remember, as soon as your money rattles in this box and the cash bell rings, the soul flies out of purgatory and sings. I had the same gripe with the 1953 Martin Luther movie. The line is, when the coin in the coffer rings, the soul from purgatory springs. Why did you have to expand it out like that? Just say the simple line. That's a pretty pathetic representation of the garden at the Augustinian Monastery. Now, there are some who complain of these things, but they write in Latin for scholars. But now, who'll speak out so that everyone can understand? Here it is. Someone's got to bell the cat, for you must be made to know. 
You have no idea why Luther's waving his 95 theses around during the church service. Holy busy. Well, 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 what a surprise you are. Here I was, expecting to find some doddering old theologian with dust in his ears who could be bullied into a heart attack by Tetzel here in 30 minutes. And there you are, gay and <laughs> Okay, this gripe is getting very nitpicky, but the Cardinal wouldn't have left his seat during this Inquisition of Luther. And you never told What are these guys burning here? Luther started this public fire to burn the papal bull. He shows up late, they're already burning something. I am concerned with a piece of paper! Let me tell you about it! <laughs> I haven't even got a gripe for this, but I just thought this was a funny way to start this sentence. Everybody look at me! I got a piece of paper, let me tell you about it! I'm adding another gripe for these stupid panic attacks Luther seems to be having. Breathe into me. And so I will repeat the question to you. Do you mean to defend all these books, or will you retract any of them? That's not what Eck really said. Here in the movie, he just asked Luther to accept some works and reject others. But in reality, Excellent. Eck asked him to recant of all his works, prompting Most Luther to say that best. not all his works were of the same kind. And gracious lords, I ask your serene majesty and your gracious lordships to take note but not all of my books are of the same kind. That statement was unnecessary. Luther asked them to take note as if they didn't realize his works were of different kinds. But X question already implied that some were of different kinds and that some could be retracted and some could be accepted. If I'm to begin by withdrawing these books, what should I be doing? I should be condemning those very things my friends and enemies are agreed on. There was excitement that day. I tell you, you can't have ever known the kind of thrill that monk set off amongst that collection of all kinds of men gathered together there. He fizzed like a hot spark in a trail of gunpowder going off in us. That dowdy monk, he went off in us and nothing could stop it. And it blew up and there was nothing we could do, any of us. That was it. Neither the emperor nor the pope dared to lay a hand on it. Wait, what? No, that, no, that's not true at all. The pope and the emperor, they wanted Luther dead. They planned to kill him. They had him named an outlaw, uh, a heretic. They were going to lay hands on him. That's why F Prince Frederick the Wise had to fake a kidnapping of Luther and lock him away in Wartburg for so long. Wait a minute, what's going on here? Luther was locked away in Wartburg during the Wittenberg riots. He had to come back in the disguise of Knight George Something to actually put an end to the riots. An event had occurred in the flesh. In the flesh. So take that thing away now and drag it away with you. <laughs> Luther would never have shown hey, such disdain for a dead body, Stay especially not the corpse of a peasant. Stew with her like a shuddering infant in her bed. Think you'll manage? At least my father will praise me for that. I must go to bed. Good night, Dr. Stafford. Now this gets two gripes. Firstly, because Martin Luther and Stelfish didn't see each other in person after 1520, after Pope Leo's um, abjuration where he demanded that Stelpich uh, revoke Luther's heresies and although he said that he would not revoke them because he never held any of Luther's heresies he acknowledged the pontiff as supreme authority and Luther um, saw this as a betrayal they didn't speak together in person and this gets a second gripe because Martin and Katie weren't born to 1525, which means that this event is taking some time post that date, and yet Stelfitz died in 1524. You're looking tired. Oh. 
Martin, I can't get over being here again. This place is full of men, and now there's only you, you and Katie. Uh... The place he's referring to that used to be full of men, uh, aka monks, was the Augustinian son. Monastery in Erfurt. But Martin and Katie were living at the university in Wittenberg. And so John Osborne's Luther ends with 19 gripes. Although if you think I missed anything, just leave them in the comments below. And so John Osborne's Luther takes second place overall on our list and is number one out of three of all the Luther movies we've done so far. And if you have any other movies that you'd like to see a movie gripes on, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and share this video and you can subscribe to my channel. And as always, I'm Night Jake. God bless and goodbye.